I've had a lot of chance to kind of stop and reflect uh, the last couple of days while I've been in Jersey. It's just beautiful here and a really good place to stop and think. And it's been an interesting year. It's been the first academic year in some time, in, in maybe three or four years, where I have gone through the whole academic year without a significant peri period of absence due to illness. And yeah, there have been days that I haven't managed. There's been days when I haven't gotten out of bed, but I have basically fulfilled my commitments this year and I feel pretty proud about that. Um, I'm in a slightly strange place in terms of my recovery where I'm really aware that I'm working really hard at it. I'm also really aware that I might always have to work really hard at it in terms of managing my autism in terms of managing the difficult thoughts and feelings I maybe always will have around food and in terms of just staying well, looking after myself. Um, anxiety and depression are still tricky. I still take quite a lot of medication. Um, and yeah, it's not, I guess it's not easy. And I think maybe it looks easy sometimes, but it's, it's not easy. Um, but I'm kind of becoming okay with that. But one of the things that's just happened um, recently is um, my psychiatrist has decided that I'm ready for discharge from her and from the eating disorder service. And, you know, that might be surprising to some people that I'm still seeing her um, because, you know, I'm apparently pretty well. Um, certainly not um, at a kind of weight um, or any kind of yeah I'm not in a place where you would think I would be under the eating disorder service anymore bearing in mind you know rightly or wrongly many of their entry criteria to to do with weight and that sort of thing and I've been a healthy weight now for about two years so yeah I've been kind of somewhat in touch with her for a long time and the reason I haven't been discharged before is partly because um I, I hate endings and I've been really scared because I get ill really quickly. If I have a relapse, I can go from being kind of relatively healthy to like really ill um, in a matter of weeks. Um, and I was really scared about that. And so I've been sort of avoiding having a final conversation with my psychiatrist because I didn't want to fall out of the service. I wanted to know that if stuff went wrong, I had a way back in. Even though I don't want to relapse and I hope I won't, I think things are stable, I'm terrified, like really terrified that if I'm discharged from services that if things went wrong that I couldn't get back in because actually before I ended up being hospitalised um, a couple of years ago, then I knew I was getting ill like I'd been up and down and up and down and up and down but things were getting worse and I wasn't sure that I could do this and I I tried really hard to get help and I know everyone like I know everyone in the eating disorders world um, and yet I couldn't access help um, and I did get help in the end but I was an emergency referral I went via a and &E, um, admitted via my GP because she was so concerned about my physical health um, yeah so yeah I ended up and I ended up on the kind of critical care unit for 10 days uh, before then ending up on an eating disorders unit when we finally found a bed um, and because things had got so bad, because I wasn't able to access the help I needed when I needed it, um, it just made me scared that what if that happens again, basically? What if I can see, you know, I might be as healthy a weight as I am right now, but really struggling in my head, and I might be able to see that things are slipping, um, and because I'm at a healthy weight, it might not be possible for me to access services. That's basically what I've been scared of. Um, and so, my psychiatrist finally got hold of me. It's been a bit awkward because we work together professionally as well. So um, we're working on this autism and anorexia care pathway. And you know what, she's brilliant and the whole team are brilliant and I love working with them and I love working with them in a professional capacity. But when you've been kind of like no showing and not, not responding to phone calls and stuff and then you come across someone and you're like, well, I feel, yeah, bad. Anyhow, anyhow. So she did finally get hold of me. We, we had the conversation and um, she was brilliant. Um, she was absolutely brilliant and she said I recognize we recognize as a service um, that you are someone who when you get ill you relapse really fast and actually an interesting thing there is I <laughs> there's so, do you know what there's so much about eating disorder thinking that's so bizarre but I find people find it interesting and it's helpful for me to be honest about it sometimes when she said to me you know you you relapse really fast you lose you lose weight really fast and you get very ill very quickly I couldn't help but feel a little bit proud of that. <laughs> um, how messed up is that? Like really, how messed up is that? Um, and it's one of the things though, it's one of the things that enables me to stay well because um, my therapist, so separate, this is my psychologist rather than my psychiatrist, whole team of people have been helping me with this. So my psychologist did reassure me when I went on the kind of weight gain journey, he did reassure me um, 
you know, you're really good at losing weight. You've proven that to us many times. You're really good at losing weight. So, you know, let's try the weight gain thing. Let's try and get to a healthy weight. And you you know you can undo that pretty quickly if you choose to um, and hopefully you won't choose to and hopefully we'll put strategies in place that enable you to stay well but the option's there if you kind of want or need to take it and actually that was one of the things knowing that I could change the clock back you know I could lose the weight again I could get ill again was one of the things sorry I've got a big ant crawling over me was one of the things that enabled me to get well because I knew it wasn't irreversible um which is a bit perverse I guess but anyway yeah when she told me yes we know that you you know you, you get ill fast it, it made me feel good in a really strange way I don't know um yeah I need to maybe think more on that anyhow anyhow so she she recognized that and we put a really clear strategy in place for how I would get referred back in if I found that I was beginning to struggle um, and we talked a lot about my early warning signs and at what point I would seek help and how and what the avenues in would be and she was really reassuring that they would be there um, if I needed them because actually you know cynically I've been expensive to them and I would be far more expensive to them if I fully relapsed again and take up a bed for ages and take up lots of their time rather than having you know an hour of her or a little bit of contact with the eating disorder service in order to get me back on track. I think the other thing is that probably she feels quite confident in my recovery now and um, she's really kind to me she's lovely she loves to climb as well and she always asks me how my climbing's going and she's she you know you kind of feel like she's she's proud that I've got hobbies now and I'm enjoying life and, and having a family time and things are good and she does t seem to take genuine pleasure in that um, which is nice and I think she probably thinks that I'm gonna be fine which in a way makes it easier to make the offer of we're here if you need us but for me it was deeply reassuring so anyway yeah so the so the the long and short of this was I just kind of yeah endings I find endings really hard my therapist also I stopped seeing him now like nearly a year ago it was last summer but I never stopped seeing him I just didn't go for an appointment one time um knowing he's a private therapist so I can you know go and see him anytime I want to um which is you know I'm incredibly privileged I do get that but um we decided to take a little break you know we'd only see each other first I went from twice a week to just once every week to once every couple of weeks to once a month um, and then it became inconvenient actually the, the therapy I, I didn't need to be going um, I thought I'd always be wanting to go um, I found it incredibly helpful and had a really really good bond with my therapist and I thought that I would probably see him forever um, but it became yeah it became inconvenient and to me that was a really healthy sign that there are other things I'd rather be doing and I'm managing okay and I could touch in with him if I needed to and I know he's there if things get hard um, but so far I haven't needed to um, so yeah so I didn't do endings with him either and I know that's wrong and all my you know people in my network who are therapists or counsellors um, will talk about the importance of endings and preparing for them and that kind of thing and I'd be really interested to learn more about how this process worked for others but yeah I, I basically yeah found that too hard and so I kind of feel like it's not ended it's still there if I need it and that for me is quite important because actually I feel like I'm well things are good most days they're not other days and that's fine um, and I'm, I'm pretty well I think I'm as well as I might ever get and I think that there's not a magic wand this isn't gonna suddenly get easier and there might be difficult times and I yeah I'm kind of accepting of that that this is you know going to be a lifelong journey um some days it's going to be a battle um and that actually I need to know that there are avenues of support there if I need them and yeah I'd love to hear other people's kind of thoughts on this is it really weird that I yeah kind of found it hard to end and was scared of leaving the service because so many people um who've been on a similar journey people who I have been um in recovery with who I've attended like uh eating disorders units with and stuff like they've really celebrated leaving like and I've taken great joy in their photos of you know this is me leaving the eating disorders unit for the last ever time um, and I've never done that because I've never quite been able to say goodbye and I don't know if that's healthy or not I don't know if that's me protecting myself for the future and recognizing I need to be vigilant forever because not doing that before was one of the things that allowed the anorexia to take grip or is it unhealthy is it that for me the eating disorder is on some level such a huge part of how I self-identify that I just can't quite let it go I, I don't know yeah I don't know
<laughs> so yeah anyway there we go I don't have answers, this is a general rambling wonderingment. Um, I'd be really interested to know your thoughts, your views, your experiences of this or other similar things. Um, yeah, and uh, enjoy the view. I've got to go back now to my hotel and pack my room up and go home. I'm incredibly excited to see uh, the children and Tom and uh, stuff, but I'm, I'm going to be so sad to leave Jersey. I, I just love it here and it's been so good for me just to kind of stop um, I took an extra day to stop, reflect, relax, enjoy the sunshine um, and take a really nice long walk this morning and I feel so, so much better for it. Um, highly recommend downtime self-care, it's important, it's important. Okay, take care, goodbye.